I have been ill, very ill, but why do you say that I have lost control of my mind? Why do you say that I am mad? Can you not see that I have full control of my mind? Is it not clear that I am not mad? Indeed, the illness only made my mind, my feelings, my senses stronger, more powerful. My sense of hearing especially became more powerful. I could hear sounds I had never heard before. I heard sounds from heaven, and I heard sounds from hell. Listen, listen, and I will tell you how it happened. You will see, you will hear how healthy my mind is. It is impossible to say how the idea first entered my head. There was no reason for what I did. I did not hate the old man. I even loved him. It never hurt me. I did not want his money. I think it was... It was his eye. His eye was like the eye of a vulture, the eye of one of those terrible birds that watch and wait while an animal dies and then falls upon the dead body and pulls it piece by piece to eat it. When the old man looked at me with his vulture eye, a cold feeling went up down my back, even my blood became cold, and so I finally decided I had to kill the old man and close that eye forever. So you think that I am a mad man. A madman cannot plan. But you should have seen me. During all of that week, I was as friendly to the old man as I could be, and warm and loving. Every night, about 12 o'clock, I slowly opened his door. And when the door was open wide enough, I put my hand in and I put my head. In my hand, I held a light covered over with a cloth so that no light showed, and I stood there quietly. Then, carefully, I lifted the cloth just a little so that a single, thin, small light fell across that I, that, that I. For seven nights I did this. Seven long, long nights. Every night at midnight. Always the eye was closed, so it was impossible for me to do the work. For it was not the old man I felt I had to kill. It was the eye, his evil, his, his evil eye. And every morning I went to his room with a warm, friendly voice, I asked him how he had slept. He could not guess that every night, just at twelve, I looked in him as he slept. The eighth night, I was more than usually careful. As I opened the door, the hands of a clock moved more quickly than did my hand. Never before had I felt so strongly my own power. I was now sure of success. The old man was lying there, not dreaming that I was at his door. Suddenly, he moved in his bed. You may think I became a friend, afraid, but no, no, I was not afraid. The darkness in his room was thick and black. I knew he could not see the opening of the door. I continued to push the door, softly, softly. I put in my head, I put in my hand with the covered light. Suddenly, the old man sat straight up in bed and cried. So I am mad, you say? You should have seen how careful I was to put the body where no one could find it. First, I cut off the head and then the arms and the legs. I was careful not to let a single drop of blood fall on the floor. I pulled up three of the boards that formed the floor and put the pieces of the body there. Then I put the boards down again carefully, so carefully that no human eye could see what they had been moved. As I finished this work, I heard that someone was at the door. 
It was four o'clock in the morning, but still dark. I had no fear, however, as I went down to open the door. Three men were at the door, three officers of the police. One of the neighbors had heard the old man's cry and, and called the police. These three had come to ask questions and to search the house. I asked the policeman to come in. The cry, I said, was my own in, in a dream. The old man, I said, was away. He had gone to visit a friend in the country. I, I took them through the whole house, telling them to search it all, to search well. I led them finally into the old man's bedroom. As if playing a game with them, I asked them to sit down and, and talk for a while. My easy, quiet manner made the policemen believe my story, so they sat talking with me in a friendly way. But although I answered them in the same way, I soon wished that they would go. My head hurt. There was a, there was a strange sound in my ears. I talked more and faster, and the sound became clearer, and they still sat and talked. Suddenly I knew that the sound was not in my ears, it was just inside my head. At that moment I must have become quite blind. I talked still faster and louder, and the sound too became louder. It was quick, low, soft sound, like the sound of a clock heard through a wall. A sound I knew well, louder, it became, and louder. Why did the men not go louder? louder. I stood up and I walked quickly around the room. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't nervous at all. I pushed my chair across the room to make more noise to cover that terrible sound. I talked even louder and louder and still the men sat and talked and smiled. Was it possible that they could not hear? No. No, they heard. I was certain of it. They knew. Now it was they who were playing a game on me. I was suffering more than I could bear from their smiles and from that sound louder, louder, louder. Yes, 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 Ugh! They, their smiles and from that sound, suddenly I could hear it no longer. I could hear it no longer. I pointed to the boards and I cried, yes, yes, I killed them. Pull up the boards and you shall see, pull up the damn boards. I killed him. But why could his heart not stop beating?